The sweet life of small, family-owned businesses. That's our topic today. There's nothing quite as sweet as an Arkansas strawberry in peak season. I'm Lauren McCullough. In this next episode of Good Roots, we travel to Lone Oak County and pick berries with an Arkansas farming legend, Mr. Bob Barnhill. The customer with us is always right. We'll discuss family, community, and what keeps him so motivated. Then the sweetness continues as we head to a honeybee farm where a couple has made it their mission to educate the public about bees. Let's go see if I can find Mr. Barnhill. How are y'all? I'm good. What can I get y'all today? I am Tori Barnhill and I'm at the corner market today selling some strawberries. Would y'all like this in the back or up here with you? Here at Barnhill Orchards, we are a family owned and operated. My dad, Rex, he is the farmer here at Barnhill Orchards and my Aunt Echo, she is in charge of all the communications and sales. My grandfather, people ask about him all the time. He sets up the table, he sells to customers and everyone just looks for the old man with the blue hat. $16. Well, back in February, Dad turned 90, and uh, he still got the desire and the want to. I, I can't keep him out of town. He just loves to go to town, but uh, he's still a boss. This all started back in 1980. He, he retired out of the Air Force, and we've been farming ever since. The popularity of the strawberry here in Arkansas has risen quite a bit, and uh, to me, it, it's the quality of the berry that we're producing in this area. It's, it's much better than something you're going to buy in a grocery store. It's dead ripe, ready to eat, best you ever put in your mouth. Plus, the local communities support us. They're realizing the value of it. And, uh, and of course, I'm here to support them. All right, Mr. Barnhill, is that, is that about right? Yes, it looks good. A little you more? You want to be sure to heap them up because the customers like to have a real full basket. So what makes the perfect strawberry? Perfect strawberry wants to be picked when it's deep colored red. We pick the strawberries every other day. We pick half the field one day and the other half the next day. Now it has very little shelf life. You've got to pick it, sell it, they've got to take it home and eat it in, in, about, in a matter of three days. Why strawberries? Strawberries sell well. People like to have them and they will come to the farm to get them. It, it, it really feels good to have a, a product that somebody wants. Do you want to know my favorite way to eat strawberries? With chocolate? No, I literally like to stand over the kitchen sink and just go like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, eating over the, the sink or the stove, they say, is very fattening. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, that doesn't bother you. <laughs> but it does me. Well, mm -hmm. to each their own. These are so delicious. Now, we can't talk about Arkansas strawberries without mentioning their ideal pollinator, perhaps their number one pollinator, which you could say are community-minded. I'm Emily Bemis here with my husband, Jeremy Bemis, at Bemis Honeybee Farm in Southeast Little Rock. What got us into honeybees is we bought the property and there's actually an airport on it. And obviously we did not want to own an airport. So this building actually used to be an airplane hangar. We decided we we're gonna do Christmas trees and uh, if you do Christmas trees, you need to have a pumpkin patch. So the number one reason why pumpkins don't grow is not enough pollinators. The easiest thing to do is to get some bees and have some bees to pollinate the pumpkins. Which I was not on board with. No, so she's actually allergic to honeybees. <laughs> he decided we probably need to start selling some supplies. We have the space to do it. And then we quickly realized we need education as well. So we started with some beginner classes. Education is the most important thing with bees. After you get your bees and you start learning and reading some more, you realize how little you really know. So the better the educated beekeeper, the, the better the bees. You notice the bees aren't all antsy and everything. We also have a wood shop where we build a lot of our own supplies. So we try to do as much as we can here and offer all things beekeeping to anybody looking to get started. So Jeremy, we're out in the workshop mm -hmm. at the farm. What are we going to do today? Um, today we're going to build boxes. So this is your standard Langstroth box. And this is the frame. So this is what we're actually building is the box that these frames will fit into. Okay. Yep, go ahead. Don't hit my finger. What good are bees doing? 
for nature. They're responsible for pollinating a large percentage of our food source. Fruits and a lot of vegetables, things like that are pollinated by bees. So if we don't have them, then we're really not gonna have all that. The honeybee is not native to the U.S. So the native bees actually do a much better job of pollinating our crops than the honeybee does. Um, the, what has happened is with our crop structure that we have, we have miles and miles of different crops, soybeans, cotton, whatever it may be. The honeybee is the only insect that'll travel as far as it will to pollinate those crops. So a native bee, if it goes 100 yards away from the, the nest, that's a long ways away. Uh, whereas a honeybee could go up to three miles away from its hive. So when you get a crop that needs to be pollinated, you can put a bunch of honeybees in there and they'll, they'll just keep going and going and going. And we get food from them. So the honeybee is the only insect that we get food from. And it needs a frame, right? Well, it'll take 10 of these. So this actually holds 10 frames. So this, so is, this is it. As long as that fits in there, then you've done it right. And the next time you pull this out, it's full of beautiful golden honey and honeycomb, right? Yes. I'm at the Bernie's Garden Farmers Market in the South on Main District of Little Rock for the first of a series that we would like to call the Farmers Market Roundup. Farmers markets like this are a place where farmers and artisans can come together and sell their goods directly to the consumers. I'm Amanda Isbell. I'm the events coordinator and manager of the Bernice Garden, this beautiful botanical garden and sculpture garden surrounding our farmers market. You can find local produce, handcrafted goods, you can find body products, all from local artisans, local vendors, local growers and producers. It's important to the farmers to have their community support and we also feel like it's great for the community to have the farmer support. Connecting people, connecting local produce, the freshest products, and the best experience. 15 varieties of heirloom tomatoes. Yes, ma'am. How long have you been coming here? This is actually my first year, but it's been like a small family, and I, I really appreciate them here. I love the farmer's markets. Uh, being that I work for myself and I only have one employee, you know, I don't get to interact, especially during, you know, the pandemic. I like getting out and socializing a little bit. I'm also really proud of what I'm doing, and it feels really good when people come and tell me what they've made and they really enjoy them. I've been coming here for a couple years now. We have a really vibrant farmer's market scene this year. I mean, we've got, you know, we've got a lot of produce. We have a lot of producers. Farmer's markets facilitate a personal bond and connection between the farmers, the shoppers, and the community. The atmosphere at Bernie's Garden just makes it that much more special. Until next time, I'm Lauren McCullough, and this is Good Roots.